in this lab, we're going to talk about monopole antenna. Just before starting monopole antenna, let's review our dipole antenna. So essentially, in dipole antenna, we had two arms. And in particular, let's consider half a wavelength dipole. So you get a current distribution, zero at the end, you're getting to the maximum at the center, and then again goes zero at the end. So if I look at this dipole antenna, I have two in-phase currents, and these two uh, radiate constructively for me. And now if I want to go to monopole antenna, essentially I'm going to consider image theory. So according to image theory, if you have an infinite ground plane, and if you have a vertical current like that, in the upper half of space, that means essentially the area here, this is the upper half of space, you can say that this system here is equivalent to the vertical current with its image. So essentially you remove the PEC ground plane, perfect electric conductor, and you replaced it with the image of this current, which is if it's vertical, the image is also in phase. So now if you compare this structure with the dipole antenna, you see the equivalency right there. But of course, dipole radiates in the upper half of space and also bottom half of space. But if you have infinite ground plane, this equivalency is valid only for upper half of space for monopole because bottom half of space is essentially shielded by the PEC. So that's essentially the concept that we are using for monopole antenna. And if I go by a similar current distribution, I get a current distribution, which is that. And after that, I don't have any uh, current because this is just the image to take into account the effect of the PEC. Now, if I go by if I go based on this concept, if the input impedance of half a wavelength dipole antenna, for example, 73 plus J42.5, and as you know, usually we, we cut a little bit of half a wavelength, for example, to make it maybe 0.48 lambda instead of half a wavelength, then I can approximate Z in with just the real part, let's say 73 ohm. That would be the input impedance of my dipole antenna. Now, if I go by the same method here, at the input port, so let me remind you that Z in, which is the input impedance, is the V in divided by I in. But then if you, if you compare this I, which is essentially your I at the input port, you have exactly the same thing here. So this I in, is essentially is I in of dipole, the same thing. But the V in here, you essentially have half of the voltage compared to this, because if you if you go by image theory, you have this, you have this, and this is your ground plane. Now, if this is your voltage of the dipole, now when you go to monopole, you only have half of this voltage here. So this voltage would be half of V in of dipole. Therefore, when you divide it, it would be half of Z in of dipole. Based on that, if, if your dipole is 73 ohm, then the Z in of the monopole will drop to about 36.5 ohm. So now this is a, and then, other things, if you want to define things like half power beam with directivity, we also we discussed this in the class, and you can look at the lectures related to the course. So that's just the, that's just the, that's just to refresh your memory on this. Now, if I if I look at my dipole antenna that I've seen before, you see the two arm. You see that the transmission line comes, and then I have my two arms in this case. Now, if I want to look at the monopole antenna, the first thing I'm going to check would be the ground plane. So here you see a monopole antenna. So this is the transmission line, and this is my ground plane. So this is my ground plane, and on top of that, I'm going to have just one arm as compared to two arms. So I'm going to get one arm, and this arm, of course, is quarter of wavelengths, 
So remember, if this is my if this is my dipole antenna, this is of course quarter of wavelengths, quarter of wavelengths for a half a wavelength dipole. So if you get only di monopole, you get quarter of wavelengths. So this essentially is my quarter of wavelengths. And if you go by the same method that you're cutting the dipole a little bit to get rid of the imaginary part of Z in, that's also a slightly less than quarter of wavelengths. So this is structure, I look at my uh, almost quarter of wavelengths and my ground plane. Now, one thing that you should uh, remember here is that all these discussions here are based on the fact that this ground plane goes to infinity. So this is infinitely large. So, but infinitely large means very large compared to wavelengths. So, I mean, it's not the exact number, it's relative to wavelengths that it matters. For example, if you have a ground plane that, let's say, 10 lambda, it's almost infinite because compared to wavelengths, it's very big. But if you look at, for example, this uh, plate that we have, is it big or it's not big? That depends on the frequency of operation that we have. For example, the frequency that we are working is about one gigahertz and to be exact is about 915 megahertz. Now, 915 megahertz, if you convert it to wavelengths, you are looking at something around eight centimeter. Uh, so you're looking at something around 32 centimeter. And then the quarter wavelengths, which is the length of this, should be about around eight centimeter. You can calculate that more accurately. So this is about eight centimeter. And if you look at the size of this from this point to this point, this is roughly 32 centimeter. So in fact, the, this one that I have here, if I want to plot it more appropriately, I have a ground plane which is about lambda and I have a monopole which is about lambda by four. So this is the system that I have and lambda is, is not very big when, it, when you compare it of course with wavelengths, it's one wavelength. So this is not gonna be an ideal ground plane for me. So as you see when we collect the data, we're gonna have some leakage behind the ground plane and that's gonna affect our uh, pattern measurement. So if you have an infinite ground plane, so you go to infinity from here, you go to infinity from here, when you look at the, the pattern of dipole, the monopole in this plane, you exactly get half of that donut. But now, and there would be no radiation here because this ground plane is infinite, but now the size of the ground plane is finite and it's a small, relatively a small, so you're gonna have those uh, back radiation. We're gonna we're gonna observe that later on. Okay, so let's go and do the experiment. Okay, so we have now mounted our uh, monopole antenna with a, a small ground plane, which was one wavelength from this side to this side, and we are uh, planning to perform e-plane copole measurements. So to start that, let me explain to you why we mounted the antenna like that and I have the same monopole antenna in my hand. So this is my monopole antenna. So from the discussion in the class, you know that the E-plane is essentially this plane. So we have the electric field, we have the direction of maximum radiation, so we create our E-plane like that. So this is in fact my E-plane of this antenna. So based on what you remember, if you want to measure in the E-plane, then you need to move in the e-plane. But, uh, but performing this movement could be challenging. So what we do would be we rotate everything like that. So when we rotate everything like that, now we can rotate the antenna like this and be in the e-plane. So instead of having difficult rotation, we're gonna use this uh, since we only support one rotation using this system. Uh, to, to move along the E-plane, which is this plane, we essentially move everything 90 degree, and now we can easily do azimuth rotation and be in this plane. So the way that this is now set up 
is to rotate like this. So again, this was my E plane. I rotate everything like that. Now I can easily rotate in my E plane. That's why we, we, uh, we, we have it like this. The other thing that you need to remember, so this was our E plane. We rotated everything 90 degree. Now that we rotated it 90 degree, this is the polarization that we are expecting. And that's why uh, we, we mounted the Yagi Uda antenna so that it creates this polarization for us so that we can measure copole E plane pattern. Now to start that, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, start the RF power, and then you can see it rotates. So when when we go to the computer and perform data acquisition, remember this was the initial position. So you know from dipole theory or monopole theory that if you have a dipole or monopole. If this is your monopole, in this direction, which is along the axis, you should have a null. So when I go to the computer and start the acquisition, first I need to observe a null because along the axis of monopole, we should have a null, right? So that's, uh, that's one thing that you should keep in mind. So remember that donut shape in the axis of the dipole, you have your null. And when it rotates and completely reverse like this, if it was an infinite ground plane, it would have complete shielding. But this is, remember, although it may look big, but that the frequency of operation is not because only one wavelength. So therefore, you get uh, uh, so, uh, the effect, uh, the, the, the lobes in the back of the antenna too. So you're going to have back radiation. So let's uh, start the uh, RF hover. So you hear the beeping. And now I'm gonna press acquisition and we start our data acquisition. So now we started from the null of the monopole, we were along the axis and now we rotate. So when we get to this, uh, to this type of uh, position, if we assume that everything is perfect, the ground plate is infinite completely and we don't uh, pick up any signal from the cable, we should have complete zero. But of course, uh, these are not the case in practice. Okay, now it is almost 360 degree complete, and I'm back in the starting position. Okay, now, the ex now that the experiment has been done, I, I, I just remember that I forgot to mention one thing about the setup. is again about the axis of rotation. Remember, the axis of rotation is very important to be set up properly. So if, I, if, I, if you look at this system, this is essentially the axis of rotation. So from here, this is the axis over which you rotate. So this is essentially my axis of rotation. And that should be aligned with the beginning of the monopole antenna here. So this is the way that we, we should properly set up our antenna so that we are measuring the same thing at different angles. So always check for proper mounting of your antenna with respect to the axis of rotation. We have now set up our monopole antenna. So now monopole antenna is set up right now in a way that it's actually measuring E-plane. Uh, if, if uh, the, the thing that I, I should mention here is that the ground plane is small. So the total size of the ground plane, each, each side is one lambda. So about 32 centimeter at the frequency of operation that we have, which is 915 megahertz, close to one gigahertz. Uh, so because of that, we're going to see back lobe of the monopole. So there would be leakage. Uh, so the ground plane cannot completely stop uh, the reception of radiation in the bottom half of space. Now we're going to start measuring. Right now, the starting point is at the point that we have a null. So now, uh, because it's right now,
the, uh, the, the monopole antenna is looking directly toward the Vivaldi antenna and we're gonna start our measurement and then we're gonna discuss our pattern so you see again we're gonna have we're gonna have this uh, issue that we have you see the saturation issue so I'm gonna let it go so now this is the by the way this is now at in at the bottom half of space so below the radiation uh, below the monopole antenna so if it was an ideal ground plane infinite in size i wouldn't have this back radiation but now i'll i'll have them so uh so and here the, it's not very clear because i have this saturation so i'm gonna apply some uh, attenuation using the software control and then uh, we do another acquisition so we're not going to save this so let's apply maybe 7 db attenuation and let's do another data collection and disregard the previous one okay now this is what's supposed to be half of donut for us so now we are just approaching we are going to the now other side so you see this side ideally would have been zero but right now we get some reception And now we're going back again to the main point. Okay, as you see, I have, so I can store this for now. So let me store it under E plane. Uh, so the problem that I have, as you see, I have some ripples here that I'm, I'm thinking maybe if I uh, reposition some of the absorbers or remove them, uh, it might be helpful. So I'm going to just go and uh, move some of the absorbers and see if I can get rid of these ripples. The overall pattern should stay the same, but I just want to have a nicer pattern than this. Okay, let's do another one. And see if the ripples got bet so in fact i think the ripples maybe got a little bit a slightly better the only thing i've done in this case i i removed some of the absorbers because if i place absorber in a bad location it could have a bad effect So, but overall, as you see, it's very similar. But in location like that, it's, I think it's relatively an improvement. So I'm going to again save that under E-plane. So it's going to replace the previous measurement that I've done. So now this is what I have. So, so what I want you to notice here is that if it was a perfect uh, ground plane in the sense that it was infinite, below 90 degree, so to this side, so below 90 degree and below 270 degree, I wouldn't have anything because it, it was completely shielded. But now because the size of the ground plane is, is not infinite, I'll get these. So, and this is exactly corresponding to the uh, null that we expect. So the overall, if you, if you look at, if you look just the top one, so above 90 degree and above 270 degree in this direction, it's almost getting the donut shape, but of course, because this ground plane is not infinite you get that but as you see the maximum radiation is uh, would be on the upper half of space so i think this probably is the location of maximum radiation that we have in this case so now now that we've done that we need to uh, perform our h plane measurement in the next 
in the next uh, measurement. Okay, we measured our copole e-plane measurements. So we're not going to measure cross-pole e-plane in this case, but if you decide to do cross-pole, you're going to keep your antenna in the e-plane uh, mode configuration, but you rotate the polarization of your transmitting antenna 90 degrees. Uh, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go directly to copole h-plane. Now, to remind you, if this is my uh, monopole antenna, this is the e-plane. So in this configuration that I have right now, I rotated everything 90 degrees so that I can rotate it azimuthly in the e-plane. Now, h-plane of this is, of course, this one. So this is the h-plane. So if I want to collect h-plane, I need to move the antenna in the h-plane configuration, which, is, which would be this rotation. So... So as you see, if I want to measure H-plane, I essentially need to change the uh, position of this antenna and mount it like this so that I can easily rotate in the H-plane. So uh, we're going we're gonna to check that and uh, uh, to, let's see how we, should, how we can do this. So to uh, start this, we need, to, we need to remove this mount that we have right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the cable. So we just remove the cable. I can remove the antenna under test. Okay. Now this mount was essentially is, is positioned in a way to measure e-plane. So I'm gonna remove this mount and I'm gonna have a new mount. And I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. So before tightening it, it's probably better if I connect the cable so that I have more space to properly tighten my cable. So now I tighten this. Now I can connect the other side to the monopole antenna. Okay, it has been connected, so I can place it here. And again, the axis of rotation should be aligned, the axis of the monopole. So this is the axis of my monopole, and this is the axis of rotation. So I need to do my best to align them. So I think now that they are aligned, so I can now tighten the mount. Okay. Okay, so I also want to make sure that uh, the antenna and this are aligned in, in, a, in a reasonable way. Something that you should notice here is that as soon as I, I mount the antenna like that, the direction of the electric field that this antenna is expecting is vertically polarized. So, because, and this is movement in the H plane. So this is the electric field that the antenna is expecting. Now, the transmitting antenna is now horizontally polarized. To, to, so to, to measure copole, I need to rotate it 90 degrees so that this also sent vertically polarized. And this is also expecting to collect vertically polarized as well. So I'm just gonna rotate the transmitting antenna So now I have rotated my Yagi antenna 90 degrees and in the data collection system that we've done earlier, we assume that the distance of the transmit to receive antenna is one meter. 
I want to make sure that we have a similar distance here. This is a little bit loose, so let me tighten this. So let's check the distance. It's almost 100, but perhaps I need to make it a little bit farther. more to be closer to 100 okay this is now 100 and this is going to be our situation right now that this is vertically polarized and the, and the monopole antenna is also expecting vertically polarized so so now we're ready to perform our copole H plane measurement. So to do that, I'm gonna start the RF power and the antenna on the test is gonna rotate. So I'm just gonna remove this stuff from the propagation path and put it aside. And I'm gonna start the acquisition on the computer. So while I'm doing the experiment, remember that everything is like E-plane in terms of the attenuation that we applied. Everything is the same and we are performing our H-plane. So as you expect, the antenna really doesn't change when you, when you rotate. So, uh, so you expect again an omnidirectional pattern in this case that we can later on take a look at the computer and see uh, if it if it meets our expectation or not so it is almost done it is back to 360 okay now our measurement is done and I, the, in the next step I can take okay we finished the e plane measurements of monopole antenna with a small ground plane remember that the the length of the ground plane each side is about one lambda so we consider it to be a, a small ground plane now in the next step we've configured the antenna in the h plane copole mode and we perform and other measurements, which will be copole H-plane pattern of the monopole antenna. As we discussed during measurement demonstration, we expect to get an omnidirectional pattern. Now let's start our measurement and see if we're gonna get that. So I'm gonna press start acquisition and ideally we wanna get a circle because that's a that's supposed to be an omnidirectional radiation pattern. So as you see, we're almost like a circle, as we expect. And now we are reaching the initial point that we started the measurement with. So that's our omnidirectional pattern. So we are going to store that under H plane and uh, so our measurement is done to, to uh, reiterate what we have. This is our E plane and this is our H plane. Now, uh, one thing I want you to discuss is that the maximum signal level that we have for H plane, I, it's reported here, is minus 3.63, and the E plane is about minus 2. So we have discrepancy between the maximum signal level of H plane and maximum signal level of E plane. In what we discussed earlier, uh, we mentioned that the, we, it's, I mean, we expect that the maximum signal level of E plane and H plane matches each other. But the question that I have and I'd like you to address is that would you expect to have uh, this situation for this case? Uh, 
uh, if you if you think that they should match and this is measurement error indicate that if you think that this is different and they're not supposed to match also explain okay now we uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about monopole antenna so let's mention the couple of things so ideally you want to have an infinite ground plane so this would be my monopole antenna it's above the ground plane and then according to image theory i would get something similar to dipole antenna but this is only valid in the upper half of space because if it's infinite then you have total shielding effect now what happened was that we didn't have infinite ground plane so we used the ground plane which was about lambda in, in size now uh, the, our ground plane if i bring it here was very uniform so you have you have a ground plane like that sometimes it's desired that maybe your ground plane is in is in, is in the shape of a grid because of several reasons but for example assume that if it's in terms of grid it's more robust uh, in windy weather so the wind for example can can go through and other reasons so sometimes it's actually good to have a monopole antenna but then this monopole antenna, in, instead of being over like a ground plane like that, be over a ground plane which is more like a grid. And this is in fact, does the job of the ground plane. Now if it's grid, it could be more stable. Uh, so then you might ask, for example, what should be the separation between these wires that we have so and so on. That depends on the design. But remember, this is the ideal situation. So they need to be as close as possible. And now how, how much close it would be with respect to wavelengths. So you want to be uh, close with respect to wavelengths. Now, one thing that we're going to discuss in this uh, the, in the in the follow up lab is is a different form of ground plane. So instead of having this very nice uh, ground plane, solid ground plane, we're gonna have, we're gonna make a ground plane which is based on these type of grids. So to show you that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this monopole. So that's my monopole. And now what I can do perhaps is for example, to start putting grids around it so i can start putting grids around it and in, in this shape for example and, and make my ground plane using this grids uh, so but then we're going to do something more interesting in this lab and that's a concept of drooping monopole so in the drooping monopole we essentially use the same concept but these grids that we create are angled so for example this would be one of them so you, you if you look at here there is an angle here so from the axis of monopole to this i'm 45 degrees the reason that i do it this way according to the lab manual is to also improve my impedance match so if i do that in instead of that 36.5 input impedance of monopole antenna i can adjust the input impedance in this case to be closer to 50 ohm which is good for impedance match. So, I mean, this angle, we can also uh, use it as a degree of freedom in the design. So now if I use a second one, so you see, that's my second one. So I have this structure right now, and then I'll go to the third one. And now I'll get to the fourth one, like this. So this, in fact, plays the role of my ground plane. And I call this drooping uh, monopole antenna. So uh, as I mentioned, it's not as perfect as the previous ground plane. But then, as you see, it, it has some advantages, for example, in terms of being lightweight mechanical stability and other things 
it's advantageous with, uh, compared to the other one. But of course, the other one, which is uniform, uh, does a better job in terms of being ground plane. But and, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we change this, uh, we change the angle. So it's not going to be a straight in this case. It's 45 degrees bent to, to, make, to make a better impedance match. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, start measuring this type of monopole antenna first in the H-plane measurements. Okay, we have now set up the drooping monopole to perform measurement in the H-plane. Remember that we are copole. This is vertically polarized. This is expecting also vertically polarized. And also the H-plane of this antenna, if I use this, this is essentially my H-plane of the antenna. So as it rotates, I'm actually in the H-plane. So this is now copole H-plane, and we can start our acquisition to see what would we get. I mean, this is also... Uh, you expect that you get the omnidirectional pattern because antenna remains the same. So I'm going to start the acquisition so that you can take a look. So as you see, the antenna is rotating. And as the antenna rotates, it's essentially we see the same thing. We are almost at our 360 degrees rotation. So we're gonna stop. So as you see, the, the monopole antenna essentially remains the same. So we now go and check out what, uh, what the software has collected. Okay, in this experiment, uh, we would like to check the H-plane pattern of drooping monopole. Uh, what we have on the screen is the H-plane and E plane of the standard monopole when we had a, a lambda uh, length ground plane. So uh, to start the measurement, let me start the RF power. Okay, now that we have RF power on, we can start our experiment using the drooping monopole. It's in the H-plane configuration right now, copole H-plane. So I'm going to press a start acquisition and we start our data collection. So what you perhaps notices, notice here is exactly what we expect because this drooping monopole still needs to be omnidirectional in the H-plane. So we get uh, an almost uh, a circle. So this is consistent with what we expect. Now, if you want to compare the H-plane of this antenna with the H-plane of the standard monopole, one factor that needs to be taken into account here is according to the theory presented in the student manual, this uh, drooping monopole has a closer impedance match to, uh, to the uh, 50 ohm uh, coaxial cable. So that's uh, essentially that needs to be taken into account. So now I'm, I'm just saving this. So yeah, that's uh, I was I was saying that uh, this is uh, when when we use that angle for the uh, for the ground plane using this uh, wires, uh, that angle has been adjusted such that the input impedance is close to 50 ohm. So uh, the impedance mismatch is less in this case. Now now that we've done this H plane of this drooping monopole. It's the time to go and set up the drooping monopole in the E-plane configuration and then start collecting its pattern.
Okay, we just finished H-plane measurement. Now we need to go and perform E-plane measurements. Of course, we are measuring copole in this case too. So we're not going to measure cross-pole. So to do that, let me remove this drooping monopole. And I'm going to remove the cable. So that's my drooping monopole. I'm going to remove the cable from here too. Okay, now, if I want to perform E-plane measurements, as you know, E-plane is this plane. So if I want to move in this plane, the rotation is not supported by this. So what I need to do, I essentially need to rotate everything by 90 degree. So instead of measuring in this plane, because this rotation is not supported, we uh, we're measuring, we're, rota we're uh, rotating everything by 90 degree, and now I can rotate my antenna in this E plane. But when I do that, of course, I need to also change the polarization of my transmit because now it's vertical, but when I rotate everything 90 degree, I need to also rotate this. And because I'm rotating it 90 degree and I'm mounting it like that, so I need to use a different mount. So I have a different mount here so that I can actually, I can plug it like this. So now if you see, it can rotate like this and that would be my E-plane measurements. So I'm gonna therefore remove this and I'm gonna have the new mount and then I'm gonna put the antenna under test. And I wanna again be sure that in terms of axis of rotation, I'm fine. This is my axis of rotation, which is the beginning of the monopole antenna. So I'm fine with that aspect. So this is tight. Now I need to connect my cable. So let's connect our cable. This is connected. is connected fine. So now I have my drooping monopole in the E-plane configuration. But remember that this is rotating like that. So I, I want to have horizontal polarization. So I'm gonna rotate my transmitting antenna, Yagi Uda antenna, also by 90 degree. And I'm also going to make sure that I am close to one meter as I expected, as I did it for the other ground plane. So yes, this is the distance is correct. Now I need to start the acquisition. So I'm going to press the RF power and I'm going to press the acquisition. And as you see, the antenna on their test is rotating. So now it's looking toward the transmitting antenna. And you know that at this location, we should have a knob. Okay, now it stops. Now it's okay, good. We have now our drooping monopole antenna in the E-plane copole measurement mode. So we're going to start our measurement and we're going to see what sort of pattern we get. While it performs the measurement, you can compare the measurements to the measurements that we had in the in the case of uh, a standard uh, a standard uh, monopole antenna with a standard ground plane so let me uh, start the acquisition 
So one thing that you notice is that although we have uh, a better impedance match, but we, are, we have not got to the maximum signal level of the standard monopole antenna. And we have some ripples in here that it could be due to the absorber. So to make sure that that's not an issue, I'm going to change uh, a couple of things in the propagation path and redo the measurements to make sure that uh, it's not the absorber. And by the way, the reason that uh, you see, I'm not going to save that for now, you see that this null of this new measurement doesn't correspond to the null of the standard ground plane is that we had a little bit of shift in the initial angle so that's that's why but uh, i mean they should be on the same location here but the starting position has changed from the first measurement that we've done so let me uh, change uh, a couple of things around uh, the uh, data collection system. I just noticed that camera is also close uh, uh, to the one side of the data collection. So I'm just going to remove them and uh, we're going to do the measurement one more time. Okay, I have now uh, replaced some of the absorbers. In particular, I put absorber on the table and the camera was on one side of the table so I removed the camera from that side too. Now I'm going to do another data collection because this is the E plane of drooping monopole. I'm going to remove the H plane measurement. This is the, the one that I'm first removing is the H plane of the standard monopole with the flat ground plane and now I'm removing the H plane of the drooping monopole. So what you see here is uh, the E plane of the standard monopole with the flat ground plane. Now this would be for the drooping monopole. Uh, as I mentioned, the angles are uh, the, the angles of the receiving antenna has been shifted a little bit, so we not exactly would be uh, having exactly the same now. But uh, but the main purpose here is to compare the maximum signal level in this case. So let's. Uh, Let's start the data acquisition for the drooping monopole and see if we get less ripples. So at least in the beginning, we get a slightly less ripples. And one thing that you should notice here is that it seems uh, we don't get to the maximum signal level that we got for the standard monopole. So if you look at here, uh, the, this is very clear that the maximum signal level is different for these, for these two. Okay, so uh, so what I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna store that as uh, the E plane of the drooping monopole. So this is. This is the E plane of the drooping monopole. This is the E plane of the uh, standard monopole with flat ground plane. Uh, just ignore the fact that the nulls are not matched. If if they if they correctly adjusted, they would match. The the the, 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 ob the observation that I like you to have is that the maximum signal level is is different. So uh, if I want to be accurate uh, for, for the E plane of the standard ground plane, we have minus, about minus 2 dB maximum signal level. For the other one, the way that we measured, we are about minus 5 dB. So, uh, so, it, uh, so I'd like you to justify why we got this result so h plane uh, so if i just focus now on the drooping monopole and i bring its h plane but so when we go to the standard monopole 
if we look at its E plane, definitely this this is my maximum of E plane, uh, this area, but the maximum of a, the H plane does not intersect that. So that's the uh, that's an issue for the standard monopole that you should discuss.